First up, should Rishi Sunak be worried about the plot to oust him from number 10? Writing the cover piece this week, Katie Ball says the plotters are focused on the next 100 days as a general election gets closer. Someone else who has written about the plot is Nadine Dorries, former minister and Tory MP. Initially, she was ridiculed for her thesis, and she's got some thoughts on that now as her and Katie join me on the show. Katie, in this week's magazine, you write about the plot to oust Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. What is going on? So we often hear about plotting in Westminster, um, particularly in recent years, moves against uh, Tory prime ministers. And I think there's a difference between Tory MPs telling you how miserable they are, how they're thinking about writing a letter, and what is currently happening. Um, because we've had over the past couple of weeks a few things where it's, uh, whether it's you know, a mysteriously funded poll in the Telegraph, whether it's um, talk of former government advisors working um, to try to oust Rishi Sunak. And I think, although it's a pretty loose group, what has become apparent is there is a cabal effectively of disgruntled Tories who would like to move against Rishi Sunak before the next election. And I think a few months ago, the sense was, oh, that, that contest and that fight is for after the election. And the question is, can this quite small group, and we know, you know, uh, some, some are anonymous donors, some are former government aides, we know a few names to do with it. In the sense, David Frost was linked to this poll, but I think has since tried to distance himself a bit. We know that Rishi Sunak's former pollster, Will Dry, is now working with some of this group. Um, and can they together between now and I think their deadline, which is around the time of the local elections in May, manage to get enough MPs on board? It seems quite difficult right now, but what is striking is the fact there is money behind it and people with a lot of time on their hands. Katie, how seriously should we take this plot? As you mentioned there, there's money behind it, there's serious people behind it. But at the same time, you had Liz Truss's former minister, Simon Clark, calling for the prime minister to go just last week. And that was pushed back on. There's been very little public support, especially within the Tory party, for him doing so. So how much appetite is there really? How much momentum is there to oust Rishi Sunak? So I think right now, this is a plot that is largely taking place outside of Parliament. There are more Tory MPs than just Simon Clark who privately will say they don't think Rishi Sunak's very good. They think if the polling is this bad, perhaps you should roll the dice. But they're a really small number. Lots of people are scarred from the fact that they you know, got rid of two leaders in the space of two years and the polling has really gone in the wrong direction since. But I think the reason that it is something to note is just the fact that there is this movement and there are, uh, you know, if you look around, things are not looking very good for Rishi Sunak. You have difficult by-elections next week. You've got the local elections in May. So therefore, if you're judging it on whether they will be able to oust Rishi Sunak, I think most people tell you that seems pretty far-fetched right now. No one's jumping in. But then again, they don't actually have to succeed to cause Rishi Sunak some serious problems. Nadine, you'll recognise the uh, title of Katie's cover this week, The Plot. It was inspired by your book cover, uh, The Plot. Uh, as Katie mentions in the piece, you were writing some time ago about plots to oust Boris Johnson. Do you see familiarities between what you were writing about then and what's happening now? Well, I actually wrote in my book, The Plot, that Rishi Sunak would go through exactly the same problems that Boris Johnson had and that they would try to remove him fairly soon too. In fact, I went to both my agents and my publishers in December 2022 when Rishi Sunak had only been Prime Minister for three months and said he's got a very short time before they start moving to get him out as well. And um, and yet, and it's predicted along with lots of other things in the book. So the, and the reason why I know this is because the people who were behind putting Rishi Sunak into place in the first place, the people who were behind removing Boris Johnson and Ian Duncan Smith and Theresa May, and actually via a technical process, forcing David Cameron into a position where he had to resign. Those same people put Rishi Sunak in place and they do this because they're desperate to remain in power because they have this really unique role at the heart of government. Unidentified for over 20 years and and most of the most them people won't even know. I mean, Michael Gove, everybody knows. Dominic Cummings, people now know, but he's been around since 2001. Dougie Smith, people now know because of the plot and he's been outed through the plot. And it was reported only a couple of weeks ago, I think, that Dougie Smith was advising the plotters. And the reason why he's moved from the person he put into power, who was Rishi Sunak, 
on to Kami Badenoch is because they desperately need to keep inside number 10 and inside Westminster and they see it all disappearing in front of their eyes now that they're 20 points. Basically, they got it wrong. By plotting to remove Boris Johnson and getting rid of Boris Johnson, they they got it so wrong and they expected to be in a different place to where they are now, which is why you will see ever increasingly desperate attempts to smear Rishi Sunak in an attempt to force MPs to move like a herd, as they did against Boris Johnson, to get their letters into Graham Brady and to remove him. And you will see constant, constant praise, constant applause, constant presentation of, of Kemi Badenoch as the replacement for Rishi Sunak. And that will continue until they remove him. And I'll just give you a date, kind of like how they will work this. They, what they wanted Boris Johnson out before Parliament rose for the summer recess in the July of 2022. And they achieved that. And they will be looking for a key milestone with Rishi Sunak. They'll be looking either for the May elections or for Easter. I can't believe they will go as far as July, but they will, they will as you've seen reported in the media, be by cut by cut, by a process of attrition, constantly putting out negative news stories about Rishi Sunak until they get to the point where they can get him out. And what will be driving them on is that they will say Boris Johnson turned it around in six months and they think Kemi Badenoch will be able to do the same. Katie, in your cover, you have some of the details that the plotters are thinking about for their timeline. Can you talk us through those? And also to Nadine's point there about turning things around, you write in your piece that the assumption um, that Rishi Sunak supporters made was that there would be time to get the polls into a better place. Actually, things got worse. Will the plotters be thinking the same thing, that it's only going to take a change of leader to see things improve? Yes, yeah, so I think in terms of the timeline on this, um, I think that it's probably seen through a few events that they can use to destabilise Rishi Sunak. And one is next week um, when you have two by-elections. Um, I think speaking to some in government, there is a sense that next week could be one of the worst weeks yet for Rishi Sunak, which is probably saying something given he's had some pretty bad weeks. Um, in the sense, you're going to have inflation figures. I think inflation will not be going the way they want it to. You're going to have figures on growth that could show the UK has been in a recession. And then you could top that all off on the Friday by losing two Tory seats. Now, number 10 will turn around and say, these seats are really hard to win. One was sparked by Chris Skidmore as a completely unnecessary by-election, given the seat's going to go any anyway at the next election. He just didn't want to stick it out. Um, the other, Peter Bone, uh, clearly was a, uh, is a very difficult by-election. You look at the terms he had to uh, you know, lose a whip and so forth and had his punishment for. Um, and then, so I think they'll be looking at the reform vote there to try and say, if reform does well, look, we need to move more to the right. Look, this this isn't working the current strategy then I think you'll start to have more potentially on just a general uh, focus on votes is Rishi Sunak's policy going to work and then I think building up to the local elections when you will start to potentially have a bit of a, ho a horror result in the sense the last time the local elections in terms of these councils were contested was a high point of the Boris Johnson premiership I think in return, the Tories will be trying to focus minds on the budget and trying to say you know, more tax cuts are coming, stick with our plan and, and trying to kick in some loyalty that way. Um, so, so it builds up to there. And I think even the plotters, and again, they're not just one group, but you speak to different figures who want to ask Rishi Sunak, nearly all will concede that they don't think you can go to Nadine's point much later than May. They see the two weeks after the May local elections as the time one would have to act. I spoke to one who said, you know, if, if the MPs don't go for it by that point, they will happily retire and leave them to it. Let's see if that happens. Um, but that gives you a sense of the times. And then I think in terms of if you want to understand the logic of those pushing for a new leader, um, they would argue, I think the argument is, um, if you the party is probably heading to defeat regardless, but the scale of the defeat is very important in terms of rebuilding the party after how long you stay in opposition. And they think the don't know voters are largely leave voters, the 2019 voters, and the current uh, situation and Rishi Sunak is not going to have that appeal. The best thing to do is get a new leader, new leader TBC, 
um, who then hits the ground running with a week of these uh, big announcements, particularly those on immigration, and makes a new impression on the public and it goes from there. Now, of course, this is all a little bit fantastical in the sense, are there really, you know, four really good news announcements to do that would fix the Tory party's fortunes? I think that might be um, a little bit wishful thinking, but that is, I think, how they would start to think you move to a new leader who can then make a fresh impression, particularly on Leave voters, where they think that Rishi Sunak has, you know, seen his popularity fall quite a lot. So um, Katie mentioned May, the Wellingborough by-election is going to be a, a seismic moment and it will depend very much on how, what reform poll in that election. I mean, I, I can't see them winning it, but, you know, Ben Habib, who's the reform candidate, everybody knows his name. And if reform poll more than 13, 14, 15 percent, I think you will see the um, Conservative Party go into what is almost a nervous breakdown point. And I think uh, Rishi Sunak, if reform did really well in that election, would really struggle to survive past that day. You know, the one thing that both Boris Johnson and David Cameron did do, and George Osborne did do when they were in power, was they always had an eye to what was UKIP, then reform, and to the left. And they constantly positioned policies to make sure that they had stakes in those ground. Rishi Sunak has abandoned the left by abandoning environmental policies, and others needs abandoned the right too with the Windsor Framework Agreement and immigration. And so he's in a very narrow place in terms of policy ground. And I think he'll find it very difficult to survive Wellingborough if, if reform do well. And, you know, Katie, you talked about tax cuts. Those tax cuts aren't coming in any way. It's not just immigration, it's immigration and tax cuts. It's actually about conservatism. And th th we know the tax cuts. There's already been this kind of like um, expectation management of, oh, we said there was going to be tax cuts to calm everybody down. Actually, there aren't going to be tax cuts, possibly because of a demand for increase in defence spending. So there's not going to be those tax cuts. And we... You know, the the Rwanda bill, are we going to see the planes take off? And, you know, how many how many illegal immigrants are we going to see being returned or sent over to Rwanda? Well, that, that's not going to make any huge impact, is it? And the fact that, you know, Rishi Sunak very this week has made three massive gaffes, you know, shaking hands with Piers Morgan. I mean, what, what a performance by Piers Morgan. But, you know, for any prime minister with any integrity or dignity, to shake hands with a thousand pounds bet over the lives of people who travelled across dangerous waters to get here was just completely tactless. And also, you know, hugging uh, in Northern Ireland with Sinn Féin is just, it's um, his, and, you know, today at Prime Minister's Questions, when the mother of Brianna Gee was sat in the public gallery, it's just gaff after gaff. And the one thing I remember Boris Johnson saying to me at the time Liz Truss went, and there was that meeting between Penny Morden to Boris Johnson and Rishi Sunak and Boris Johnson about who should take over. The only person who actually had the mandate to take over was Boris Johnson. And I think Boris said to me at that time that he looked Rishi in the eye and they said, what they've done to me, they'll do to you too. And I think it was the only point at which Rishi Sunak froze and um, looked that his confidence was dented. You may think rationally, that the right policy announcements are what will bring the party together. That won't be what gets rid of Rishi Sunak. What will remove Rishi Sunak are some serious, I would imagine, pieces of information that those who've been close to him for the last seven or eight years, who actually put him into power, will decide to use against him in the near future. Katie, is number 10 worried about the plots that are uh, being whipped up to remove the prime minister? And Nadine earlier mentioned potential runners and riders, Kemi Badnock, being one of them. Uh, the Trade Secretary has publicly suggested that she has uh, no interest in replacing the Prime Minister anytime soon, that she backs Rishi Sunak. But what will they be thinking inside number 10 as these details, as your cover piece um, uh, uh, includes, come to light? So I think the view of number 10 is they're not nonchalant. I mean, they're trying not to suggest they're overly worried in the sense, oh, it's an amateur hour plot. Look at these people going around claiming they're going to bring down the prime minister. And I think there's been an effort to almost try and, um, you know, We've seen some names come out. I think there's a view of trying to find out who the donors are. It's harder to hide in, you know, daylight than nighttime. Um, but I think there is definitely some alarm 
because it's not just about a handful of MPs. Um, to Nadine's point, it feels as though, you know, there's different forces in the background. There's obviously people who, who want to throw some money at this and so forth. And it doesn't actually take that much money. If you think about the price of a poll, like the MRP poll that the Telegraph ran um, by the mysterious alliance, a couple of £10,000, which on the grand scheme of things, I don't mean this is about doing a £1,000 bet, but probably for that level of money and for the level of disruption it caused to the Tory party and the dominant force in politics, I mean, it doesn't take that much to start using these figures to do things like that. So I think there is concern. I don't think there is panic. Um, I just think there is a sense that they may not, I think the view is more, they're unlikely to be able to oust Sunak, that's the view from number 10, um, but they can do plenty of harm in the process. And then I think to the point of uh, successes, whether it's list side or after an election, it is names like Cammy Badenock, Penny Morden, who do come up. If you had a very swift contest, you need about over 100 names really to get to that point. Um, so I think that even those who are perhaps supportive of Suada Bravman in theory, they would um, probably think that she would struggle to get the required number. Hmm. Uh, Nadine, last question. I was looking at some of the reviews of your book, The Plot, when it came out uh, just before we started to record. Um, and I, I won't list some of the things that were said, there's no need, but there's a lot of skepticism, let's say, and criticism of some of the ideas you put forward in that book, mainly around this idea of a plot and this idea of conspiracy. What is your reaction now? So yeah, I expected the criticism because I was told before the book came out what the criticism was going to be, what the plotters, you know, I was told David Cameron and Michael Gove are going to say that you're, you know, you've sold three million books, you're a great fiction writer. And that, you know, that I knew the attacks would come in, you know, I'm a woman, I'm, you know, a, a different kind of conservative than people are used to. And I knew those attacks would come. But what I found absolutely fascinating is people who attack it are now running with stories from the book. So I find it really interesting that the same people who attack it are picking the bits of stories out of it that they want to run with and making their own stories from it. So, you know, it is what it is. It's sold incredibly well and um, and and it's selling consistently well every week, which is interesting because normally you get like a big, you know, a big sales and it and it tails off. But it's actually selling consistently well every week. And I and I just know from the feedback that I'm getting just not just from journalists, but from from party members, from just the public who are reading it, the feedback I get is, tends to boil down to, it all makes sense. And it does all make sense. And I just wanna make one final point, you know, those people who, who worked with Rishi Sunak to get him into power have been working with Kemi Badenoch for an equally long period of time because they always have an hour and a spare. They never don't have somebody in reserve. So, and the idea to them that it would be Penny Morden would be absolutely abhorrent. And they will only go when they know they can get Kemi into place and the danger of Penny has passed. Well, perhaps we won't need the film version of the plot if we see it play out in real time. Nadine and Katie, thank you so much for joining me. Mm -hmm.